Hey folks, welcome to the tenth episode of the Deaf Connect show. Today, our guest is from Bologna, Italy. He's a software architect. He's also a Microsoft MVP. He has created a lot of tools and processes for the community, and he also created the first Dynamics newsletter. Today, he is here to specifically talk about his newly created tool called DataVerse REST Builder. So, please welcome Guido Priete. Hey Guido, welcome to the Deaf Connect show. Happy Hi. to have you here. Hi Danish, thanks for having me in the show. Yeah, uh, how are you today? Yeah, all okay. Busy day. Busy day? Yeah, yeah it's always busy day. It's uh, I feel like it's the busiest uh, year of every year. It's like 2021 has been the busiest. I didn't even knew how it went through. Like I was so busy doing all the work and community stuff and whatnot. Uh, is was that the same for you as well? Yeah, also this year was a bit uh, challenging than before. Also the period, I think end of the year, many things to close before the end of the year. So <laughs> yeah, kind of normal. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the case. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'm so glad uh, that you can make um, make your time and uh, connect with me on this show and talk about your tool. Uh, but more importantly, I also wanted to know. How was your journey into Dynamics? Because you have been in Dynamics space for so long. Uh, so how did that journey happen? Uh, like, how did you even enter the Dynamics space? Yeah, uh, the journey for <laughs> sure. Uh, it's more than 10 years that I work with uh, what is called now Power Platform. Uh, I started uh, being a C Sharp developer. So I was already in the .NET world, and uh, uh, 10 years ago, I had the chance to work with the product that was called Dynamics uh, CRM 4.0 at the time. And after that, uh, I uh, found myself uh, with the new versions, new names, and <laughs> until today. Yeah, yeah. And how did you like the journey so far? Yeah, I, I like because otherwise I will not work for so long with the product. Uh, uh, it's a product that, uh, of course, you need to know. Uh, you need to start to know uh, the tricky part, the not easy part. But compared to other products also for Microsoft, it's not so bad. And it gives the challenges, but it gives also very big rewards. Mm, right. Yeah, that is so true. Uh, well, you have also created a lot of other tools and processes and the first Dynamics community newsletter. So I wanted to know what was your inspiration in creating that first newsletter and also what was the inspiration in creating that PCF gallery? Yeah, for the newsletter, uh, I talked about also this before. It's more about the what I needed to learn myself. Uh, as you know, the Power Platform as we know today is a very big. I mean, there are many components, uh, Power Apps, Power BI, Power Automate. Right. It's a never-ending uh, product, actually. And it's very difficult to keep up with the news that, uh, you know, Microsoft announced something. Uh, there is a new right. community tool released. Uh, it was very difficult to, to, to catch up with the news. And, you know, uh, people actually work with this product is not something that we do also because we like but it's our work day and uh, maybe you just focus it on some technology and uh, you you don't have the time to check the other so uh, that was my main goal for me first myself first and after for the others and it was a good trip in the end nearly three years and yeah. you started your newsletter of more focuses on developers. Um, meanwhile, I was already uh, continuing my, and after I closed, the other newsletter started. Uh, it's uh, it's very interesting that uh, after mine, other people continued this. So the community needed, and I, I was happy that uh, this was the case. Yeah, well, you are the inspiration, uh, I would say, for for 
my newsletter because I, you know, I reached out to you and then said, hey, um, I would like to create this newsletter focused mainly for developers because your content was really great. Uh, but then there was so much things happening even in the developer community and there were so many blogs coming out and only if certain blogs were being captured. So I was like, oh, maybe, you know what, we just have one single for just uh, developers and you helped me select uh, the newsletter platform. So thank you for that, first of all. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, you. You are right. My my newsletter was more generic. I I don't want to be focused too much on developer stuff. Uh, also because um, uh, myself I was more focused on that, and I already knew the the news or the tools or the piece of code that was more interesting. So, and the more generic news for for my case was uh, maybe can can slip away, and that was one one way to keep me updated. Uh, yeah, the the engine was uh, uh, was very useful, and now it's uh, been acquired by Twitter, if I remember yeah. correctly. So it, yeah. it's a good tool. Yeah. You, you, it uh, allow you to um, to focus more on the content than the engine itself. Correct, and it's now free. So initially we used to pay, right? <laughs> and uh, and yeah, then as but... the subscribers grew, we had to pay more, and then now it's all free. I'm like, wow, amazing, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was free after I closed it, but <laughs> yeah, <it's okay. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, your second um, question was about PCF Gallery, the inspiration. Um, also, the gallery, uh, yeah, it was this new technology that uh, all the developers on the Power Platform was waiting, and uh, after finally it reached the public preview. I just want to create a, a website where people can share what they uh, what they were doing. Uh, the, the problem with uh, these uh, the space that we work on is that um, not everybody are on the same platform. Maybe you read some some news on Twitter, someone has a personal blog, uh, uh, someone share on LinkedIn. And I mean, for PCF, uh, uh, because it's um, it's a graphic appearance, you know. The first things you notice about the PCF is something you see on the on the form, so it's something new, not as uh, you have a habit with a model-driven app. So I want to say, okay, let's create one website where I I can try to collect what people are doing with PCF control. So if people want to show what they are doing, um, I started with a few control. I think under ten. I I didn't imagine that people will create so many. I think the site has more than 20 pages now, so there are more than 300 controls. Probably I, I don't keep the count, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah it, um, it's a nice site that uh, uh, people in the community, when you're looking something related to PCF or on Google, you look at PCF Power Apps Component Framework, usually my site uh, pop up in the first results and people can, can go and look. It, it's, uh, it's nice. It, it's yeah. useful. I won't think that it's useful. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. I mean, every time whenever uh, some of our clients uh, ask for like, okay, can we do this? And I was like, okay, let me go and look at PCF gallery. There should be a control someone might have created. And then it's such an easy way to demonstrate to clients and show them, hey, see, someone created this and it could be, it's doable in Dynamics. So, and then they were like, oh, uh, and some of the controls are so intuitive that it is awesome, like it is so inspiring that can this be done really? Uh, and it's amazing to see uh, the quality of controls on PCF gallery. Yeah, it's, it's a useful. I, I, it's a, the word that I, I think I would be, I like more to attach to it. It's, it's useful right. as it should be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, and then now you created uh, the new tool called Dataverse REST Builder. So what made you come up with that idea of creating the tool? Yeah, uh, as you probably, probably everybody know that there was already a tool that doing something similar that was called the CRM, uh, CRM REST Builder by Jason Latmer. Right. Uh, it, it is a, it, uh, that is a tool that, that is able to create the, the uh, the JavaScript code that uh, to web API action like create, retrieve, uh, uh, by 
by selecting the table, the columns, and allow you to to be more precise on the syntax. When you're writing code, the, the most uh, uh, trouble things is that maybe you are missing something, you don't know how to specifically write the name of one column or one table. So, and that tool that uh, created by Jason, uh, uh, it helped me countless times. Um, problem with that tool uh, was that it was not updated uh, uh, for a long time and um, it uh, also uh, come up with the old interface so it was not ready for the unified interface and um, and there was also some small bugs regarding the uh, <laughs> many people uh, faces about the filtering about state state code uh, I mean it was okay to do 99% of the job you can do with that tool. The 1%, uh, uh, if you are a developer, you, you know how to, to do around that limitation. Right. Um, so I checked the code and um, I decided to start from scratch. And this new tool and to, to first of all, things to, to work with the unified interface. Uh, new up in your dynamics and install and it, it's showing uh, your instance uh, to fix some bugs that uh, the CRM rest be bad and also to provide some new functionality because from the last time uh, it was updated the new type uh, new um, attribute types come in the platform like uh, uh, choices right. or multi select option <laughs> set if you want to call it the other way yeah. Or the file column or the image column uh, have some additional attributes. And okay, and um, I had the time, lucky for me, and I said, okay, let's uh, try to 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 beat this new tool. I contacted Jason, asking if he was um, okay with it. You know, I I know Jason personally, so I I don't I didn't want to have a, a trouble problem between us. You no, know, you are creating something that is already existing and. Right. I and he said, okay, go go for it, no problem. And um, I and I it, it's clear his tool is clear and inspiration. I don't deny, and I uh, probably it would not exist. Uh, my tool would, would not exist without his tool. He is the the first idea of uh, having such a tool to create the request uh, is uh, right. is and is only so. It's yeah. uh, extreme in the first place. Um, yeah, it's a nice tool, and uh, recently, a few days ago, I released also the XRM Toolbox version. Uh, before the uh, solution, uh, you have only the managed solution that you need to install inside uh, your instance, and uh, from today, you can uh, found in your uh, XRM Toolbox uh, library. Uh, you can uh, search for it, uh, download and install, and it, it should work. Yeah, <laughs> it should work. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's see what this tool is all about. So, yeah, ready to I start share. to share my screen. Yeah, just a second. Okay. So, first thing is that the tool is on GitHub, and uh, probably you will uh, add the link on uh, yes. the description of your video. So, from the GitHub, you can download the managed solution under the leases section and you can download the managed solution uh, the managed solution you can install uh, uh, from an instance uh, or using the classic interface uh, for example if you're using one on-premise uh, version and you don't have the new interface or so you go to the usual settings solutions uh, and uh, if you click import uh, you after you have the file uh, that you downloaded from the site. Or if you, uh, if you have the new unified interface, uh, you can go to the Maker Portals. And make sure you, uh, you select the, the right environment, because yeah. that is a mistake I always make. <laughs> and go to Solution and click on import, select the file, and after proceed with the import. This is the procedure. Yeah. So after it is installed the, the version with, as the managed solution, you can go to the apps listing, or you just click on your instance. This is the, 
usual interface that appears, and you should see here database REST build. Uh, once you are in this window, you just click and the application will open. Uh, this is the if you install the managed solution. If you go with the XRM toolbox version, uh, you can uh, go to your XRM toolbox, uh, click on the tool library, and uh, search for REST. You will see Dataverse uh, REST Builder. Uh, you click on install, and after it appears uh, under your uh, uh, list of applications. And if you click, we can connect to an organization. Wait uh, the connection to complete. And it open the application. Okay. No. Uh, the application is quite simple. It is uh, not rocket science. Uh, recently added also the URL of the instance you are working on. So you can, every time you can see which, which exact instance you are working, this is very useful also for the, more for the XRM toolbox version, uh, because otherwise you need to look down the corner. So you can keep always an eye so on where you are working on. Correct. Um, you start with the idea uh, to create a collection. Uh, this is one of the main things difference from CRM REST Builder. Uh, CRM REST Builder, you just open the application you, you and you directly work on the request you want to create. Right. With the Dataverse REST Builder, you can create uh, a new collection. So you can go to the file menu and create a new collection. Here. And a collection is a composition of requests. If uh, uh, you work with Postman, that is a, a very well-known tool for API developers, it, it works in a similar way. So. Uh, you can uh, rename it, uh, my collection, and uh, you can um, request. And for example, we can create a folder, uh, mm. and we can organize our uh, request in different, uh, uh, with different structure. I mean, I. I wanted to give the users the ability to organize the request as they wish. So, mm -hmm. uh, subfolder, folder, or directly under the collection. Right. So, once you select the request, uh, the first thing is to select uh, uh, which type of request type you want to generate. So, as we have here yeah, with the usual crude uh, methods, so retrieve, create, update, and delete. Uh, associate and disassociate that are uh, uh, typical to a Dynamics uh, platform. Mm -hmm. So to combine or two records in a one-to-end or end-to-end -end relationship. Right. Uh, we have the retrieve next link that is um, a request when the uh, retrieve or retrieve multiple requests uh, give you as a message an additional link. For example, if you are retrieving more than X records, mm -hmm. so you get that uh, message and you can paste the URL into this request. Uh, predefined query allow you to execute uh, uh, system view, uh, personal view, or fetch XML code. Uh, these uh, execute uh, custom API, custom action, uh, action and function are uh, to, as they say, to execute these uh, messages of the platform. So, um, Dynamics 365 uh, Dataverse has this uh, um, internal function or internal action, and also this custom action and custom API that uh, a user can create. And uh, uh, there is also a request for execute a classic workflow. Uh, and recently, I also added this two new request type to manage file data and manage uh, image data. So uh, these are for the new attributes, uh, the file, date, uh, file and image columns. Uh, it allows spe special uh, uh, requests to retrieve and delete and update these kind of columns. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start with the uh, one of the most common one, the create one. Okay. Uh, once we select the request, uh, we can see our configure tab. So this is the main tab where uh, 
uh, we have our settings. So the version of the API we want to use, mm -hmm. if the process is synchronous or synchronous, if we want to uh, specify a token header or not for using with a better token, uh, if we want to do an impersonation, so if we want to execute this particular request uh, uh, with another user, uh, and uh, these are uh, usually dependent uh, on the request type. So in t for this request, we have formatted values, uh, return record, the text duplicate. These are specific to the request. Uh, and uh, uh, we are prompted to select the a table. So this is normally how, when you select uh, a request, it works. For example, if we uh, select a retrieve single, the, we have, uh, as in the top, the version, the process, the table, and uh, specific to the request. Uh, the other tabs uh, are the uh, where the generated code the generated code will appear. So uh, usually, depend on the request, you can have uh, a XRML Web API syntax. The XRML Web API execute syntax. Mm -hmm. uh, the jQuery syntax, the XML active request, uh, a request for portal, and for some specific codes, so like retrieve single, we have a power automate uh, mm -hmm. uh, description. Okay. Let's do with the create. So. Once you create, uh, uh, once you select uh, your request type, uh, you should select uh, a table. Uh, the drop down will show you all the tables uh, uh, present inside the system. Uh, in this instance, this is a trial, I create a custom table. So, and after we selected the application, it uh, uh, fetch all the uh, connected information. So the columns of this table, uh, the relationship, the alternate keys. So it, it takes a bit of long time, uh, mm -hmm. especially when um, when entity is connected to to many table. But mm -hmm. usually, <laughs> it is faster than uh, than this running. Let's see. If it works, or otherwise we can restart. Okay, so it takes a longer. My my connection is a bit <laughs> is a bit slow. <laughs> okay, in this uh, request type, they create uh, it prompt uh, with the columns uh, of this uh, table. Okay. So mm -hmm. for a specific message, we just create the name and uh, it uh, show you the length specified in the attribute. So we know that this length is maximum uh, 100 chars. So mm -hmm. test uh, custom table. And we can add, for example, additional columns. In this case, uh, uh, we just want to create with a name. Okay. So mm -hmm. once we selected the columns that we want, we can go to the, uh, we can decide how we want to execute uh, uh, this request, or we, if we want to just copy the code. So, the I try to add a, a bit of comment on each request to know what they're doing, if there are some specific uh, um, uh, configuration that are not available. For example, if we decide that we don't want the formatted values, uh, there is a warning here in the request and say, looks, uh, XRMA Web API always return uh, formatted values. So, or mm -hmm. if we do any impersonation, uh, for example, uh, XRMA Web API doesn't support impersonation. You can't do impersonation. Mm -hmm. So, if you need impersonation, you need to use, for example, a, a jQuery syntax. Okay. Right. So, uh, it actually creates a code and um, um, the the main tabs uh, it uh, are read only, so you can't actually uh, modify the code. So this is always show uh, the code that has been generated by the application. Uh, mm -hmm. The next step is to move the code to the editor. Once you move to the code to the editor by clicking the button, you are moved to the editor tab. And here mm -hmm. you can eventually um, update the code or try the code. Uh, for example, if you want to add just some additional log, for example, like uh, some warning. And from this window, you can also execute the code. So mm -hmm. usually, the uh, as there is a warning here, uh, the console log messages will appear inside the results tab. 
So okay. uh, if I click on execute, I will be moved to the result tab. Okay. And also here there is a big warning like the asynchronous calls because uh, as you know, uh, asynchronous call can, can, can uh, take longer than expected, especially when you are doing some uh, uh, heavy retrieval or some special message that takes more second, some seconds more. So it's better to wait uh, here the, the result. So in this case, we were able mm -hmm. to create uh, uh, this record and the return, as we can see from the code, uh, it showed the new ID. New ID. That was taken yeah. and it appeared in the result. So this is the ID of the of the record we just created. So mm -hmm. let's try with a new request. For example, the uh, retrieve single. Okay. And uh, for example, we want to also here retrieve the name. So here we can select the uh, the columns we want to uh, to retrieve. So for example, I selected three columns. So the the application tried to be uh, uh, as much as possible to give the user information. For example, you can see here the logical name always displayed on the on the table. Uh, you know, right. sometimes you, you work with different languages or you don't remember uh, how it's called the, uh, uh, the display name of the specific entity. So, and usually if you are a developer, you remember the, the logical name, no? And this right. also with the, the column, you have here, you are modified on, or the name in this case is, uh, uh, that is also the primary column, uh, it has the attributes, no? I mean, I... Mm -hmm. There are several places where you can try to put the information and hopefully it will show the, as much information right. as possible. Um, another thing we can do here with this request is that uh, when we want to retrieve a single record, for example, we need a primary D. So one of the options we have is to uh, click on this um, icon. And if you are using the manage solution version, it uh, prompts you to select a record. So, oh, that's nice. So you, this is the record that we just created. Okay, and mm -hmm. uh, we can just uh, click. Uh, sorry. Okay. And uh, the uh, the primary idea is being added directly to the uh, to the the form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. If we want to do next, the next is, for example, if we want to execute this with uh, jQuery, we can move the code, code to editor and we execute the code. So the result is the uh, result of the, uh, of the code that we did and it showed the parameters that we... Right. So the name, the created on we selected and the ID of the record. And of course, because this is a retrieve single uh, request, we have also this uh, power automate. Uh, if a person want to, uh, there is the, inside the power automate, uh, you have this uh, action that is, uh, the name is get a row by D. Uh, usually you select the type of name and you need to put the row ID and the select column of the expand query that you um, specific for this, uh, action inside power automate so it is a, it's a easy for the user they can click here and copy or if they want to mm -hmm. it, and after they can paste it to the, to the thing so the other uh, mm -hmm. requests are uh, quite uh, uh, similar uh, you know the update is similar to the create the uh, the retrieve multiple is uh, maybe the most uh, complex and the most uh, uh, use it the probably because the yes. retrieve multiple is the uh, more difficult to find because you have a filtering no? so right and yeah. no i i mean i whenever uh, uh, json latimus tool uh, crm rest builder i used to use retrieve multiple like thousand times i've never used any other request because every other request is like straightforward right <laughs> Yeah, the, the thing with the, the filter is something that it was the maybe the most hard to to replicate the functionality uh, because you can 
uh, you can do a filter. Most of the time, you need a, a very easy, sim easy, very easy filter, like uh, just a name to be equal to some condition. But when you have some kind of um, grouping, like uh, end and of con and and or condition, uh, it can be quite complex. So uh, let me do a little demo about how a filter can work. So. Uh, we have our custom table, and we have, of course, our column selected. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, if we do by filter, the first thing is the start. Okay, so uh, we can decide to uh, which column they belong to the filter, or uh, uh, we can add a different group. So let's say that we I want uh, uh, first uh, uh, retrieve all the names that uh, contains the word test. So, if I go to XRM Web API and uh, I execute this, I get this message because the record we created before it contains the word test. So, and if, for example, mm -hmm. I select uh, I want the record that does not contain test, I go to, for example, the XML FTP request. I move to editor. I execute it, and this time is uh, an empty because uh, uh, we have only one record uh, in this trial and uh, the, mm -hmm. the condition is not fit. So uh, let's uh, move, for example, that contains test. And uh, if you want to, for example, add a new column that, for example, created on and uh, on today, and if we execute, this is returned because it is created uh, today. But uh, uh, we can decide also the logic between the columns. So uh, if we want to do an or condition between the columns. So uh, for example, mm -hmm. we want a name that contains test or created on today. Of course, uh, uh, to, to show the or, we can do as yesterday. So in this, with this condition, the record will still appear because the name contains test also if it has been created yesterday. Right. So let's try it with jQuery. And we have the uh, our uh, condition. Of course, if I put now to end, uh, it should show an empty because the condition is not respected. Uh, the other thing is to add a group. So you can add an additional group, and uh, you can add also another created by, and you can do equal current user, for example. And you can decide also the logic uh, between the groups. No. So every time you add a group, mm -hmm. you can decide uh, uh, how the between the groups work, and you can do nested groups also. So uh, hmm. it's a uh, kind of well, uh, it's, <laughs> you can create as yeah. many it, uh, inner groups you want. <laughs> Technically, wow. Okay, uh, it should work. Right. So um, for example, let's let's show now how it works with this. Uh, Way. And uh, you can decide for inner group how the logic works. So as you see, for this inner group, the logic is end, but the external logic for the group is or. And when you go to generate, uh, the filter is actually applied uh, here. Uh, if I show to the power automate, mm -hmm. maybe it's simple. So uh, you see, it is end uh, and all the property or. Uh, um, it's kind of complex because um, uh, when I created this, uh, I can uh, first I did one level, and uh, so you can just create this kind of uh, approach. Mm -hmm. But after I I decided, okay, probably people will just ask to create a <laughs> groups or nested condition. I, I think it, it, it's something that I often sometimes happen when you do no so to have nested condition right and in the end i was able to to create the code and uh, uh, it, for the test uh, for the test that i did it uh, it works as expected and of course you can also add the order so you can add the uh, the order column and decide you want to ascending or descending based on the condition and also right. here you get the or to buy, or when you are creating your uh, uh, condition, yeah, it's quite long, so mm. uh, it gets converted yeah. to the actual uh, 
jQuery, I mean the actual JavaScript uh, syntax. No? Uh, in addition mm -hmm. to this request type, is you can create also the you can select also the uh, relationship. So, for example, mm -hmm. if you go to uh, this uh, custom table as a column uh, as a end-to-end -end relationship with the account. So, for example, if we want uh, uh, just uh, the the relationship, so the um, the application tell you which are the uh, selected relationships. So when you select here, um, uh, it show you with a bold uh, um, with a bold indicator of the text. Uh, let me do with one to many. There are many. So uh, as you see, one to many there are more relationships now with the default uh, table. Mm -hmm. So let's see that I want from right. a sync operation. I want uh, color region completed on. And I want to back the lead failure and I want error code, for example. So when you go to the drop down, you get the summary of uh, the relationship and the columns involved for each uh, relationship. And uh, if you click mm -hmm. again, select uh, the, the relationship where you already uh, selected some columns are uh, highlighted with the bold. Uh, you know, okay. sometimes it's difficult. So, you already know, and it's difficult to find them. So, this identify you exactly which um, uh, relationship has already a column selected. So, before we can write the query, we have to select the relationship so that we can use them in the query, right? Yeah. So, uh, for example, this uh, generated the query. Now, it's kind of complex because it has this uh, expanded property. Uh, this. Uh, so I don't, yeah, expand. So mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, uh, it it can be quite of complex. So this tool, uh, if you need to create this uh, expand, uh, you need to work on the relationship, can assist you to, to create. Because uh, when you select the columns, uh, uh, you use the uh, logical name, okay, of the, right. uh, sometimes with the relationship, you need to use the schema name that is, uh, you know, logical name is all lowercase, and schema name can yeah. have um, uppercase uh, uh, letters. So uh, as this is the case, right. for example. So, and uh, is it difficult for a developer to to work on this? So after you selected also the expand in the code generated uh, after it uh, give you the assistance also how you to retrieve these values now. So. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, this is the code where you get the uh, attributes of the table, and uh, these are the mm -hmm. relationship we selected. And uh, you know, if, if they are present, of course, it do a classic for to to show each result, and it, it try to show also the the type of the column. No, uh, this is the text. This mm -hmm. is the time. This is the one number. Uh, to assist the developer to know uh, which kind of um, attribute is dealing with. Uh, I know there are some tools uh, uh, <laughs> like here to generate also the, if you work with TypeScript, uh, the, right. uh, the uh, typed uh, version. The typings? The timings, yeah. 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 Uh, if you yeah. work with uh, late, I, I call it late bound. So if you are in the yeah. in this kind of situation, it can assist you to give, okay, this is a, a lookup, for example, no? Uh, right. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, because we selected now the expand, uh, the additional co uh, the additional uh, columns, so the expand query of the Power Tomato also is, uh, is filled, no? So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I do have a few questions, yeah. So, in, uh, and I just wanted to point it out uh, for the audience too. It's like in the filter column, you still have those up and down arrows, and that is for... Uh, moving them up and down, and so you can rearrange them, correct? Uh, in in the filter column. Yeah, yeah, uh, I didn't uh, mention that, but yeah, you can rearrange the the order. So if you right. you can't rearrange, you can't reorder the groups uh, right now. Uh, it's kind of complex to rearrange the the, the groups. But uh, rearranging groups won't even affect the output, right? Or would it? No, no, no. It doesn't affect the output. It's just for the users to to know. Uh, for the filtering, it doesn't affect because it's just for the user the right. preference. For the order by, it right. affects because you can add the different Correct. columns and uh, 
right. you can decide the descendings, and this is actually uh, decide on what is the the Close actual order of the record. Uh, but you know the. Right. The order was already implemented uh, for the order by, so <laughs> it was easy to implement also for the Vizek Karam. I believe also for the create record, uh, you can decide the, the columns. No? Right. So you can decide the, yeah. you know, the import sequence number and you can order it. It doesn't affect the code, but uh, right. it's, uh, it's nice. You know, I, I always start with the name attribute as first. No? Mm -hmm. And after I go with the other attributes that I want to to fill, so right. it was uh, right. Yeah. And what is that portals tab over there? Yeah, the portal tab uh, table is um, a new table that I also added. Is in preview, and uh, uh, as you know, also one of your the guest of your show, the Omar, created the Omar portal yeah. web API helper to select. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, for the portal. So this is give you also the syntax for the uh, safe Ajax method, no? the web API mm. dot safe Ajax method. Uh, the tool of Homer, it uh, um, allow you to select which tables and exactly the column you want to um, uh, um, enable inside the portal. So, no? so that is very useful. Right. And uh, because the syntax is very similar to jQuery, um, was uh, for me was easy to to copy and uh, to to get also the the, the syntax for portals. Uh, Omar tool also generate um, the syntax for it. Uh, I mean, it was uh, easy and uh, it's in the preview. <laughs> so uh, of <laughs> course uh, I added many words, important note, warning. <laughs> uh, you know, read the documentation yeah. because uh, you know the the how it works is based on this. Um, in this uh, web API, yeah. is if Ajax, um, right. you know, when, when something doesn't work, and it always to figure out which is the exact piece that's not working. So Portals is uh, right. a bit special for that. Right. And then you, once you have created these collections and folders and all these requests, you can also export it out, right? Yeah, this was one of the main um, things that I wanted to to create with application. So now we have our collection. So for example, I can do a, a save collection and it's, it is saved as a JSON file. And for example, mm -hmm. if I go to XRM toolbox, I can load the request that I just uh, created and uh, I get the same structure. And of course now we need to, uh, XRM toolbox need to fetch the metadata now because we are doing a new mm -hmm. request. So, uh, right. And it actually uh, worked. And you can uh, em import and export your request. Uh, another functionality that I recently added was the ability to uh, save the current state uh, of the request. For example, if you do right click here, you can see there is this save state. So this mm -hmm. actually uh, save the collection inside the local storage. So until the local storage of your browser uh, is not uh, cleared, uh, mm -hmm. It actually uh, keep it in memory and save. So, if I click save and, for example, I reload the data of S3 builder, so my request it appears. So, uh, mm. one user asked Ooh. this functionality inside uh, GitHub, and uh, uh, it was uh, not so difficult to implement. And uh, yeah, it, it can be useful because. Uh, you know, some, sometimes you are working. You maybe you you don't need to export uh, it. Uh, some some people may like to export the collection uh, to save in um, you know under Git or they how, how they prefer to to save. Uh, some people they just want to save inside the browser. No, uh, you are working for mm -hmm. for something. So right. it, it's a good collection. Of course, you can just yeah. save and. Uh, you can create a new request and uh, uh, rearrange folder under folder. <laughs> it's uh, mm -hmm. as you yeah. want. And then uh, you can also export this as a Postman collection too, and then use it in Postman as well, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the things you can find inside the documentation is actually this uh, this page here, 
uh, that is how you, when you want to test Web API, it help you to um, how to set up a Postman environment, how to connect. There is also a client TD provided by Microsoft to, to do the implicit uh, authorization. So I wanted to use this, the information on this um, on this page, and the the collection can be also exported to Postman. You see, uh, when you do here, uh, we can do export as Postman collection. Um, a, a dialog will appear to select the grant type. So the implicit is the one that is um, um, shown inside the documentation. So uh, there is a URL of your instance, the client the provider Microsoft, the authentication URL, and the callback. So these are the same info that you can find on the uh, Microsoft documentation page. Or you can also if you are working with the client credential, you can change your uh, grant type and uh, you have, for example, the client ID and client secret and the tenant ID of your instance. And you can select mm -hmm. if you want to work with the, the endpoint, if you want to version two, that is the modern one, or the version right. one that is the old uh, endpoint. So, for example, we can try and uh, export this as um, Postman collection implicit. So, if I click on export, it will save uh, our JSON file and I open Postman. I have a Postman here, and I can click on import, upload file, and when the collection is exported for Postman, you can see that the name is uh, uh, the name of the collection, the date and the time you export, and there is also Postman collection uh, written. Mm -hmm. uh, this is because both formats are JSON, so just to <laughs> separate right. which one is for Postman. So after you click it, you can create, uh, uh, you can import and it appears uh, on the list. So you have the same awesome. structure of the uh, Dataverse REST Builder. So the same order that we have here, so test folder, my request, new folder, new request, you have uh, on the uh, on uh, post one. So this was the request that we created, so the create one. As you can see, mm -hmm. the post, uh, there is the URL, the, the body is the, the type that was uh, uh, at the moment where we created, and of course, these requ uh, this require uh, um, a token. So if we go to right. the uh, to the authorization section of the collection, uh, because uh, one collection can contain multiple requests, and each request, uh, the um, authorization is specified to be taken from the parents, no? inherited yeah. from uh, the parent. So the parent is the collection, so here you can find all the token. So if we get the new access token, we have, uh, this is the user of this trial. Okay, okay. and uh, this is the token that uh, uh, we have now. Okay, so let's try it in. We can specify the name, uh, test two. And if we send, uh, Let's see how it works. Okay, looks like it uh, uh, created. Show zero four. Yeah, two for, two for yeah. Yeah, there is the header, of course, the entity ID. Um, so if we back to the tool, let's try with uh, yeah. This so for example, this was uh, an empty request. Let's do a retrieve symbol of our custom table, and here we should see test show. That we just created. Yeah. Okay. The call on his name. And of course, we slow, but <laughs> it should work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. should do the file name. So always pay attention to the name. The drop down uh, always. <laughs> so this is the name that we actually want. This is it primary column. It's a, also a reminder to myself that this is the primary column. <laughs> so this is the yeah. execute code. Okay. And this time we have test uh, As you can see, awesome. the Web API execute, uh, uh, you know, sometimes with the XRM Web API, you can do um, an execute multiple. No, So you can combine different requests. Right. They require different syntax. So this is in case you need them. Of course, I <laughs> documentation link if someone is more interested in this. Yeah, I, I like each and every 
uh, request has that documentation link. So people can just go directly to that links and read more about it if they are having any issues. So, uh, and the other thing that I really liked about this tool is like, you go from configure, uh, select what you want. You want jQuery, Web API, XML HTTP request, and then just move your code, takes you to the editor, and then uh, execute your code, takes you to the result. Like you don't have to navigate away and then it just takes you to those tabs automatically. It's, it's like fluent. The UI, I like it so much. It's just really fluent UI. <laughs> yeah, I, I try to make it more uh, faster. No, I don't want the user to lose always the focus. You, you can always go back on the configure tab, no, where you're configuring. If you want to see right. the latest results, you can always check also if you didn't execute. The, I know some people maybe can find this uh, cumbersome that you first you need to click on the move code to editor, no? But um, uh, mm -hmm. the tabs of here, they always show you the generated one. So they are, uh, right. you, you are always sure that this is the code generated by application and in the editor you find your code, no? Maybe you, you want to mm -hmm. do something else, uh, uh, you, you are, getting some other log, uh, you want to tweak a bit your request, uh, you want to try something. So, um, yeah, it, it's a, a user can, and oh, of course there is always the copy code if a person wants to always copy, yeah. and also the results. Yeah. That would be me. <laughs> yeah, that would be me. I'm like, yeah, I'm done with the configure. I'm just going to copy the code. Doesn't matter what the result is. I'm, I'm going to pretty, be pretty sure it's going to work. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, with the collection, as you said, yeah, you can export the collection, you can share with other people, you can export to Postman if you, some of your yeah. workmates are working with Postman. Uh, because, uh, of course, is um, not everyone uses the, the same tools, no? So, and of course, right. this is, was yeah. one of the reasons I also tried to create the XRM Toolbox version, because many people use the XRM Toolbox and uh, yeah. I know that my tools is not always the uh, convenient to install a managed solution uh, inside your environment. Uh, and right. uh, so it's uh, right. uh, thanks to Tangi that uh, uh, made the latest changes to XM Toolbox, I was able to release it. So. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, uh, another uh, thing I wanted to ask you is, um, is there anything in future that you may want to introduce TypeScript to this one. I'll fetch and or Axios as a request. Mm, yeah, I'm not. I mean, I thought about to add the different languages here, no? uh, like for example, C, C Sharp or Python. Python. Um, I don't know yet. Uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> um, Maybe people think it takes time to create a tool like this. Huh? I mean, it's um, right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a lot of efforts for sure. Yeah. I can totally see that. Like you have thought through Postman collection, you have thought through creating folders, rearranging them, and then that filter uh, and the level of uh, filter groups that you can create. That was like just mind blowing because I know how hard it is just to create the format of that code and then not only just you have to not only just think about how you can generalize the code to create the format but also to create the ui and whatnot it's just too much of time to create a tool for sure yeah no i mean the tool itself is not so complex i mean there are different other tools that are more complex than this but i i try to to make it to to work as smooth as possible um you know and of course crm crm rest builder had, had already all the majority of the functionality you already see here you know you can create the the code already for XRM web api uh you can create all the, the majority of these requests was already available in XRM rest builder so uh, my main focus was to first replicate uh, was already was available no? uh, because uh, Otherwise, people will say, okay, I need to use two tools, one to do this and one to do that. So uh, I can understand the inconvenience of that. So, and after I was mm -hmm. able to complete that, uh, I, I focused on the new request uh, and uh, um, people are always free to top an issue if they want an, 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 a feature request. For example, the Power Automate tab actually was made by a GitHub issue. So uh, Lean, that uh, you also know him. <laughs> uh, 
He's a power automate guru. <laughs> yeah, he said, ah, I will I also like to have this kind of uh, request. And I said, okay, let's let's try if I I I can do it. No, and I, I was able to do it. Also the export to postman, uh, the because initially I also did only the implicit type and after the uh even another person that told me the issue uh was i work with crankization so you can do something like that and say okay let's let's, let's try if it can can work so um yeah if i receive a suggestion is always uh, appreciated the, the time is the what it is if i have time to work on it i'm i would be happy if possible to implement and the source code is uh, is on github and if people want to take the code uh, in, make some improvements, uh, I have no problem with that. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, Guido, the XRM toolbox version uh, is, was also like icing on the cake, uh, cake and really like, first of all this, building this out, uh, recreating that CRM REST builder, adding the new requests and whatnot. And I mean, this is the whole package and with XRM toolbox on top of it, uh, I feel like it's going to be used by a lot of people and it's, it made a lot of people happy uh, because they don't have to go through the approvals and whatnot to get the managed solution installed on their solution, on their instances. Um, and, mo and everyone loves XRM toolbox, so why not just put it over there as well? So it was, I, I believe like it was the uh, best thing to do to put it on yeah, oh, also the, so. the long numbers uh, confirmed this because I probably tomorrow, the after tomorrow, will be more downloaded uh, by XRM Toolbox than the managed solution. It, it's already <laughs> the number that is, uh, uh, I think, over 200 uh, installation already of this tool. And uh, mm -hmm. it was uh, roughly the number of the managed solution downloads. So, of course, uh, I... I understand why people wanted an XRM Toolbox version. It was not possible for me to create it before, and uh, it took a bit right. of effort. But in the end, uh, yeah. I was happy that also it's easier. I, yeah. I also use it myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Guido, it was nice having you and walk us through the tool. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, I can see like so many stuff so many features been implemented and it's the best level of tool for a very long time. So thanks for creating this and appreciate all the efforts you're putting into the community. Now, thanks to all the people that use the tool. Of course, thanks again to Jason Latimer that created the original tool. Right. It's, it's really, I mean, uh, the tool has many years and uh, everybody uses that. I just wanted to provide an alternative for the for the new Dataverse version and with the new columns. I but yeah. the in the end, everyone in our community using different tools made by every people. People use your tool. Uh, I don't. I don't want to name other people because it's <laughs> everybody <laughs> knows them. I mean, they you know. I always name them so. Um, it's also show how much this community is really about. I mean, if you see some other products of Microsoft, they, also there is a big community, no? Right. Around, but the number of tools uh, of people that really share what is going on on the community uh, is really not easy to find on other communities. Let me and and this be honest. I you see other communities there is, but the effort on tools that there is on this community is is wonderful i mean it's, and i'm just happy that i just give a little piece to to use yeah like yep again uh really good insights uh guido it's always a pleasure talking to you and uh, it was good to have you on the show and demonstrate this awesome tool uh, so thank you very much yeah, yeah, thank you to you. And I'll, I probably will put this video also in the description of GitHub so people, if they want to to see how the tool is used, that they can link to this video. Ah, I mean, it's, uh, awesome. it's it's always nice to see an instruction because I don't create a video by myself. I don't want to, to show. So, you know, people can come and see the, the video to see how it, the application works. Yeah, awesome, awesome. 
Cool. Well, thank you very much to be on the show. <laughs> thank you. Such an amazing tool that Guido has recreated uh, from CRM REST Builder into Dataverse REST Builder with more added functionality. And plus it is not only just available as a managed solution to be installed on your instances, but also as a tool on XRM toolbox as well. So go and download the tool today. The link to the tool managed solution as well as XRM toolbox is in the video's description. To connect with Guido on social media, the links are also provided in the video's description as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel because 2022, a lot of new content coming out, a lot of fantastic content coming, coming out and you don't want to miss out. So until then, take care.